guys, it's Miss Melissa from the Children's Hands-On Museum in Tuscaloosa. And since we're talking about color this week, I thought I might show you a few ways that you could have some fun mixing colors. So um, before you start this process at your house, make sure you talk to your parents about this, get their help and get their okay for using some of their supplies. So what I've done is I have several Ziploc bags and I squirted shaving cream in them. And in this bag, I put food coloring. So I chose red and yellow food coloring and I zipped it up really good. Okay, that's where you want your parents' help because you don't want the food coloring getting out on you because it will stain your clothes. But most everybody has food coloring around the house. So as you mix the red and yellow, you're gonna get another color. You're gonna get that secondary color, orange. Now, in the others, I've used tempera paint in case you have some tempera paint around your house. And I did pull those primary colors we talked about earlier in the week. And you can see I've got red and blue, and then I've got yellow and blue. And so all you do now is just have some fun mixing it up. Just don't go so crazy that you bust it, because again, you don't want to get this all over you. And um, just have some fun mixing up some colors. All right, so we've worked on this one a little bit. We mixed yellow and blue, and we made a really deep shade of green. Parents, a little tip for you, if you're afraid of making a mess, you can always double bag this, and you might want um, the other kind of Ziploc bags. This one has the zipper on it, and I feel like it might bust open easier than the other kind. So good luck, have fun, and try to stay clean. Here's another activity you can do with blending colors, and I just used a coffee filter and magic markers to do this, uh, just some little washable Crayolas. Now here at Chom, because we've got all kinds of stuff here, we actually have a coffee filter that must be for like a hotel or a restaurant, it's huge. And all you wanna do is take your coffee filter, no matter what size it is, and just fold it in half, look kinda like a fan, and then fold it in half again, and then you're gonna use your watercolor markers to decorate it, okay? You can do all kinds of things on it. You can just put circles, but one thing you wanna do is try to make sure that color goes through the paper, okay? In a little bit, we're gonna add some water to it and help it along, but still, we can do a lot to help it. Okay, so you can see that I finished coloring. I just did some basic designs on it. If you have some markers that aren't the, you know, make primary colors and the secondary colors, that's okay, kind of play with those too. All right, so the idea is we're gonna spray this with water and I'm putting it on a, on a tray so it doesn't really get on the table, although I can't clean it off. And I'm just gonna spray it down. And the idea is that the color is going to bleed through the layers of the paper. You can kind of see it all moving around too. And so I'm going to leave it and let it dry. I don't want to touch it right now because the colors will drip and run. Okay, I showed you one earlier. Okay, you see the one I did earlier with a regular size. And you see how the colors bled through. Kind of made a tie-dye look to it. So have some fun with color and mixing colors this week and keep following Chom at home. Bye. <laughs>